And then the concept I want to use is, and that's maybe the thing that I think is more sometimes useful than, you know, we were talking about uh, people talking about fragility and, and trying to define the capability or the performance of a government. Or the, it's actually to say, well, what is the nature of the implicit deal that exists between these leading groups? And I say the word implicit, you know, the, 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 the elite bargain, uh, you know, the moment of striking the elite bargain, it will not be televised. You know, it's not a very public moment. There is something there happening in society that is happening. You know, economic historians like Douglas North implicitly use these terms to saying, look, this is how states emerge as well. You know, when, when uh, in the first instance, these kind of implicit deals are deals about basic peace and stability. You know, we're not going to just fight each other. We're going to actually um, have, a, have an implicit deal with each other. And so I, like, I find it very helpful to ask in every country, all these messy places where we're implicitly talking about these, including all these fragile places, to actually say, well, what's the nature of the deal here? You know, is there, first of all, a deal? Is there a deal? How stable is that? How fragmented is the elite? Are they actually coming together? You know, conflict is always clearly a fragmentation of an elite. Um, you know, you and, and is there some form of a, of a deal? You know, and, and it goes back to this, this underlying concept of Max Weber as well, that, that it's that fundamentally a state is in the first instance a deal about you know, who can use violence, the legitimate use of violence. So it's basically a deal that's saying, look, we are now a coalition that now will de decide. We are the ones that are allowed to, to decide what peace and stability looks like. You know, and that means it's a coalition. It's not everybody in the elite. Um, but we'll, we'll, have, we'll have this coalition. And then fundamentally, when it brings back to what's happening in societies, it's it's typically not just a political deal. It's also a deal about how resources are being controlled, who has access to the state, who has access to natural resources, who, and how are they being distributed, who can do what activities, and so on. So it's a bit like, you know, they are implicitly at every moment in time writing the rules of the game. Okay, and so so that's that's in the way where we're, where we're getting. And, and I like to look at every society well, what's the nature of what's the nature of the bargain here between powerful groups? Okay, and can come back to that. What it may mean in, in in fragile places and so on. For me, the key concept is is that so so the key concept is really this elite bargain, you know. And there's plenty of political scientists that one way or another talk about it. A variation of it could be political settlements theory as well. There is somehow you need to understand what that deal is between these between powerful groups. How does growth and development come about? Well, this deal doesn't have to be perfect. You know, there may be some be some can be more equal than others. You know, there can be certain things. But within that elite bargain, there is another tension to actually that growing the pie and having a degree of inclusion is important enough for us. Why by saying that? Because there could be another uh, kind of elite bargain. You know, if I go to take one uh, African country, the Democratic Republic of Congo. You know, I, but the jury is a bit out on Chesikedi, but definitely the two Kabilas and Mobutu Sese Seke, they were kleptocrats, you know, and basically, if you belong to the state, you got license to steal. That's not an elite bargain for, um, for, for growth. You know, that's not a deal. No, it's simply the deal. If I'm in, in the States, it's, it's, it's actually in the way he operated it, Mobutu Sese Seke operated it. It's not even uh, a zero sum game. It's like a negative sum game. You know, I, 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 I steal so much that I create so much instability and chaos that there's no one ever will try to uh, uh, set up, accumulate anything or create an asset. And so you've got a whole business, quite a thriving business community, essentially destroyed in the process. So kleptocracy. You could also have, you know, Malawi, look at the elite bargain in Malawi. I would say, well, that's a political class that um, tends to have a very short term in tenure. Maybe it's endogenous here, but short term in tenure, uh, in tenure in government, you know, about 60 or 70 percent of MPs get kicked out every election. So, you know, that means your horizon is pretty short as a, uh, as a as an, um, politician. And definitely the deal is there. Let's actually 
as much as we can line our pockets in a short period of time. And that's all we do. Uh, we don't see any growth. Peaceful country, but no, somehow or another, horizon is very short and nothing really ever gets done. And occasionally, uh, you know, occasionally we, we invite some kind of um, pro 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 protagonist that loves uh, silver bullets like a Jeff Sachs with fertilizer subsidies. You invite them happily in because they love it. It's a brief moment of hooray. And ever since fiscal crises have, are caused by the fact that they can't unwind this great silver bullet that um, Jeff Sachs introduced around 2000. So, you know, you, 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 get, uh, you, you, you get other societies. So, but you can get elite deals that are developmental. And I think what is very striking that places like Bangladesh or Indonesia or China are all in very different way. Say Bangladesh, with a, where during a period that democracy functions very well, definitely changing how they were running the country, also how the elite was behaving in general um, from a period in the 1970s, a lot of conflict and civil war and whatever. They actually, civil war, uh, sorry, in the war of independence, uh, I should be more precise, war of independence uh, followed by uh, a famine and a lot of political violence, that's the better term. Um, you know, you end up in somewhere in the 1980s Yes, there's still vicious rivalry between the two political families, but actually implicitly an agreement on that actually growth and development is something that really should be pursued and actually aligning the incentives in all they do, basically meaning they're not all the time just attacking each other on economic policies and undermine fundamentally the growth progress that's being made. And so, you know, you've got, what is it, 20 years or more now, 6% growth per year, and, and doing this from a very fragile place. And I think Bangladesh features on most fragile countries' lists, actually finding an implicit elite bargain to actually doing um, substantially better and, and reducing poverty dramatically and so on. So anyway, so that's the kind of a concept that I find more useful to look at the nature of that messiness, to look a bit like what's the implicit deal what holds the formation or the emergence of a development bargain and an elite bargain focused on development and growth? What holds it back? And 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 look at it like that rather than categorize them uh, with some, you know, certain a characteristic like weak state capability that so much invites a technocratic solution, which won't help. And you know, endless technical assistance to Malawi never helped. It's a fascinating moment I had once talking to the vice president and uh, he at some point that the, 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 the conversation came to corruption and said, yeah, corruption is a real problem in our administration. We really need to change it. Um, yes. And to do that, we need a lot of technical assistance. You know, technical assistance is going to change uh, corruption in the country. And I, yeah, I don't think another UNDP workshop will help yet, but that's, uh, that's where we are.